Hi! For this video, we will get to know the other names of other functional groups other than the alkane that we knew before and then alkene and the alkyne. We will get to know the other functional groups names so that we will be able to connect these functional groups that we know to their names. And so we can recognize organic compounds depending if you're given the structural formula or given the name. So the goal for this video is we will learn further in summary how do we recognize the functional groups based on their names. So I'm using the poster made by compoundchem.com and this is a good way to summarize everything because they're giving us the, the template or the structure of these functional groups and also the name of the functional groups and at the same time how we name them and at the same time there is an example for each functional group. So let's start with the three red circles here. The three red circles are the ones that we basically know of. These are our alkene, of course, that ends in A-N-E. Our alkene with a double bond, all hydrocarbons with a double bond. So we have their names end in E-N-E, -E, in. And the ones with a triple bond, we call them alkynes. Therefore, their names will end in Y-N-E. So those are the basic organic compounds that we know the basic functional groups. Now let's go to the ones with oxygen in the middle of carbons or some hydrogen also inserted in it. So the, let's go to the three circles here. The three circles are, we have alcohol and we know that alcohol ends in hydroxide. There's a tip or terminal in the compound with OH. And of course, if it's alcohol, and I think you're familiar with this, their names, end in ol or all so example of that is ethanol and you got uh, um, butanol and then you got pentanol so those names that end in ol that means you get an alcohol next one is the ether ether is when the oxygen is in the middle of two carbons two alkyl groups you put the o at the middle so that's your ether ether ends in OXY and then ANE. So because O is in between two groups, so that means you need to name the other group differently, the one on the left and the one on the right. So the one on the left will end in OXC and the one on the right will end in ANE. So methoxyethane is an example of that. So methoxy because the one on the left is methyl, and ethane because the one on the right is your uh, ethyl group. Okay, so that's ether, oxy and ane. Next is epoxide. Epoxide is a cyclic structure in which O is within that cyclic structure, which is in between still two carbons, and it's part of the cyclic structure. How do we know it's epoxide? The name ends in in and then oxide, the word oxide. So epoxide, oxide represents oxygen so in oxide that means you get an epoxide example of that is ethene ethene oxide now the moment we're discussing each one of this i want you to take note of this in your notebook so that when you're given exercises to recognize these functional groups then you'll be able to pinpoint right away what functional groups you're dealing with okay next is the one in orange we have what we call the halo alkane. Halo is not like angel, but halo from the word halogen. So there's a halogen within an alkane structure, within the single bonded hydrocarbons. So if there's a halogen, the halogen will be named like the way we name the branches. If it's a halogen, chlorine will become chloro, fluorine will become fluoro, iodine will become iodo, and so on and so forth. So if it starts with the name of a certain halogen and, and it ends in O, so chlorine becomes chloro, and then the ending of your parent is in A and E, so that means you get a halo alkene. So that's it for halo alkene. Let's now go to the second row. In the second row, we see the one in green circles. 
these are the ones with your C double bond O. And there's quite a lot of them. There are seven of them in this poster. So let's start with the basic, the C double bond O and then H. We got what we call the aldehyde. So aldehyde is easy to remember because the name always ends in al. Because it's an aldehyde. So ethanol is an aldehyde. It's like um, it has ethyl but it has your C double bond O function. So ethanol. So ethanol represents two carbon atoms, but one of that has your C double bond O. Okay, and then the one on the right side is your H. Next is the ketone. Ketone is when you only have C double bond O and then alkyl groups on both left and right. So if you've got ketone on, so it, its name ends in O and E, on. So example of that is a propanone. A propanone has three carbon atoms, but one carbon there is or has a C double bond O, so propanone. Okay, I hope you're getting this. So you can just associate the ending of the name with the primary name of the functional group. So own for ketone, al for aldehyde. Next is carboxylic acid. This is kind of easy to remember because there's the word acid. This is the one with, with the only word acid in its name in organic compounds. So carboxylic acid's name ends in oic, oic, then the word acid. So ethanoic acid has two carbon atoms. One carbon is C double bond O, and then there's OH on the other side. So COOH is carboxylic acid. So therefore, the name should end in oic and the word acid at the end. Next is the acid anhydride. Acid anhydride has a double C double bond O, and then there's O in the middle. There's O in the middle between the two C's, and both C's have C double bond O, and then to the terminal of these carbon atoms, you have your alkyl groups. So we call that the acid anhydride. It's still acid, but it's anhydride because there's no more hydrogen in the O. Unlike carboxylic acid, there's still O and then H. Here, it's just C double bond O. There's no more H. So what's the difference of acid anhydride with carboxylic acid in, in regards to the name? The name will still end in oic, but then there's the word anhydride. There's no more word acid. So oic anhydride represents your acid anhydride. So for carboxylic acid, it ends in acid after the oic. But anhydride, you just adopt the name anhydride. So example of that is your ethanoic anhydride. Okay, next is ester. Ester, you know that that's the relative of carboxylic acid, only that you replace H from carboxylic acid with another alkyl group. So C double bond O, O, you get an ester. And how does an ester, how is an ester named? It's named not really so much related to its name it ends in y l l and then o8 so ester ends in l o8 example is ethyl ethanoate so ethyl is the one on the other side ethanoate is on the other side also so ethanoate will represent two carbon atoms as well which is attached to your o here the ethyl is the branch on the left side of your c or the group beside your um, left side of your C. So il oate again, il oate means that's an ester organic compound. Next is amide. Amide is also related to C double bond O, but after C double bond O, the one attached to it is your amine or amino. And the functional group, we call that amide. So very easy. Amide, you have NH2, C double bond O, the name will just end in amide. So ethanamide has two carbon atoms with NH2 in it, but one C of that should have a double bond O for it to qualify to be an amide. So amide, it will just end in amide. Next is acyl halide. So all halide, so you get ethanoyl chloride. So chloride is your halide there, which is the end of your C double bond O, and then attach is the chlorine. Now the rest here, Please take a look at that, and I want you to take note of these other remaining functional groups and take them 
take notes of them and we will further discuss that when we meet in class. So bye for now. Bye.